I just want to just, again, just thank God for just this time and space right now in this place. Um, if with regards to the weather, because I know that it is, it is deteriorating, uh, so I won't be before you long. This will be abbreviated. But the blessing is, is that I can go back and expound on it next week since we'll be here on, on Tuesday, God, God willing. All right. So the first thing again, so as you know, again, at our man of God, our, um, our bishop, first lady, uh, with them being out, we just getting, just praying for their, uh, for them to be rest, resting and, and just enjoying, praying for all those that are out on the roads that are out trying to make it on tonight. Um, again, we um, don't take it for granted that we are here amongst the land of the living for one bit, one shape, or, you know, way or another. Um, and some of the things, again, we've been asked to just to speak about on tonight, and again, I'll, I'll start and my wife will continue on, but again, I will cover it again on next week, but I do have uh, scriptures. But the biggest thing, whatever, that I wanted to cover, the mo most important scripture, I guess, well, they're all important. Let me make sure I get that straight. They're all important, but the, the one that I'm kind of just focusing upon, again, that's kind of like coming from the, the context of what we're talking about on tonight with regards to myself and my, and my, my queen, and we're talking about Psalm 116, verse 12. What shall I render unto the, unto the Lord God? for all his benefits toward me. There are a lot of things and there are countless things. And I, I, what I will do is I will go ahead and give you the laundry list of, of scriptures that I have, but I'm not gonna cover them all. So just be like, man, he got a lot. But yeah, no, I'm not gonna cover them all tonight. So the main one being uh, Psalms uh, 116 verse 12. And then after that, it would be uh, Matthew 6, and 24, Matthew 6, verses 31 and 33, Philippians 4, 11 and 12, Malachi 3 and 10, Proverbs 3 and 9, Acts 1 and 8, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, Hebrews 1 and 3, Deuteronomy 10 and 12, and last, Hebrews 12 and 28. And again, I'm not covering all those. I'm just, I'm going to hit the high, like we said in the military, hit the high points. Okay, so with regards to the perspective of some of the things that I would just kind of just speak upon a little bit tonight, it's basically in three areas. For us, again, as we're talking about our marriage, money, power, and, res and respect. And again, I'm just hitting the wave top, covering one thing tonight, then I'll let my wife get up, and then we'll just keep it moving from there. So from the biblical perspective or whatever, again, what, again, the scripture, what shall I render unto the, unto the Lord God Come on, uh, for all his benefits toward me? As I think about those things, I think from, I'm thinking, I'm coming from a husband's perspective. One of the things, one of the areas, again, the subtopic or whatever that comes with that would be, okay, or question-wise would be, what is the proper perspective towards money? And we're talking about from us as a, as a couple, Okay, so money in our, in our household has not only been the way to exist every day, it has been a topic of discussion, sometimes calm, sometimes it's been heated within the context of marriage. I'm just, I'm just being real. Um, so when we first start out, we again, now we're, we're just, we just, just hit our 24th year. Um, thank you. So we've just hit our 24th year, but let, let me tell you something. It'll make difference 24, 42, 68, 72, 108, 125. Put your number in there. Money is always, it always is, and it always will be a point of friction for couples. 
when you folks get to that age and you get married, just know that's one of the things. Money has gotten folks sleeping on the couch. Money has gotten folks kicked out of the house. Now, I'm not saying, let me, let me go ahead and put this out. I'm not saying it happened to me, but I'm just, I'm talking about in a, in a general context. Money, money has, has, money has brought heartaches and pains. It has, it has done some things, whatever it has caused harsh words. It has caused things being said that, you know, you can't take back because, you know, once you put it out there, whatever, it's out in the atmosphere. So it makes no difference whether or not you, if you say, hey, I'm sorry, they'll forget, you know, you can be forgiven, but it won't be forgotten. And trust and believe, you mess around and get in the discussion about money, and that thing will creep up from the back forth, you know, back part of your brain and come up to the front, and you will get reminded when it comes regards to money. So me and my wife, we had a different perspective from how she viewed money and how I viewed money. I'm talking about as far as what it's used for. Okay, again, just keeping it real, just trying to pull back the sheets and, you know, let it be what it is. Uh, okay, so early in our marriage, marriage, marriage was, a, was a, money was a touchy subject. We got into it a couple of times about money. Because I was always under the premise, and this is just how I was, you know, was, was taught and raised when it came to money. If, I had, if you had a bill, you paid the bill in full. So if it messed around there and that bill was too big for what you had in your pocket, you need to make some adjustments then so that way all your money that's in your pocket is not, you know, taken away by that one bill. There was no such thing as, you know, going in and, and hey, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put, so my bill's $200 and I'm going to go ahead and put $20 on it. That would get, we, again, we'd have, a, we'd have, a, again, it was, it, that was a thing. Or when you're talking about credit card bills, you're talking about paying, yeah, it says your bill was $355 or whatever, but, you know, minimum payment on that is, you know, only $25. But if you get done tacking on all the interest and everything else or whatever, you paying just double what it is. And, oh, by the way, it's going to take you about a year or two to pay it off. So the perspectives were different. Whereas, and not trying to throw my wife up under the bus, but her kind of hurt sometimes her thing, but hey, I'm gonna pay the minimum. And I'm looking like, what you mean you're gonna pay the minimum? All I knew was, you know, if you got a bill, you paid that bad boy off and you forgot about it. Like, hey, let's go and get rid of it. Right. Same thing when it came to, again, people treat, we used to treat, you know, you would treat credit card as like money. Credit card is good to have, don't get me wrong. Because again, any, you know, going through life or whatever, you have to have a major credit card. You can't rent a car. You can't do certain things or whatever um, without having a credit card. And that's all well, fine and good. But don't use a credit card as if it is money. Because you could be out there spending and splurging, talking about you got your, you know, your Visa black card and you know, whatever, American Express and all sorts of type of stuff like that. But lo and behold, it's going to come a time when that bill is going to show up in the mail. And uh, that bad boy ain't going nowhere until it's paid off in full. So our perspectives were a little bit different. We would, get in, we would have discussions with regards to how we should spend money. Because I've always been taught that, hey, you need to go ahead and you take and put, put something back. I'm a, you know, I, I, can't, I won't say I'm frugal, but I will say that, you know, I've been called cheap, and that's okay. <laughs> that is okay. Because what that has allowed me to do, being cheap, if you want to go ahead and put me in, I don't know what the new term is that, you know, maybe the younger generation that you might refer to it as, um, but it never bothered me. The reason being is because guess what? Whenever it comes time to do something, my cheap way of thinking I wasn't sitting up there and I wasn't stressing about, hey, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? I hear you. I'm finna go down there and like my daddy taught me or whatever, I'm finna go pay for the whole thing, one walk. Bop. Here you go. See you later. Right. It's mine. I'm, I'm done uh, with I'm it. I'm done with you, yeah. Come so on. that was kind of my thing. Whereas, again, not saying that my wife would, it was, it was just different. I got to watch what I say because, again, even though I'm talking to y'all, whatever, I still got to hear about it later on tonight. 
<laughs> so why, why'd you say that? <laughs> That's going to lead to further discussion. <laughs> why? But okay. But that's all right. But okay, let me fast forward again because I said I'm going to keep it short. What I know now is what money is is to us. It is a blessing. It is a blessing. And there's sometimes when you get that phone call, that text message, that money can be a curse. Because there was a period in our time in our lives when we first got together and we were still figuring each other out because we're a blended family. Again, so you're talking about you're talking about two broken people coming together, being melded together with, with a family where we're talking about, again, having stepchildren in that. The perspectives are different when it comes to when it, again, when it comes to money. And I can recall getting those. Well, I wasn't getting called directly, but she was would get it. It, it was like, hey, if I can get a text in Acrecia. If I can get a phone call in a creasy, that's that's her right there. If I can get in, if I can get in touch with her or whatever, whatever I need, I'm going to get. And I'm talking about from family. I'm talking about from friends. I'm talking about folks that, you know, it, it was like it was the first bank of Mike and Cretia. And I'm like, wow. wait a minute. We would have we would have discussions, friction and everything else whatever, within the house whatever, when it came to. Money, because again, like I just said earlier, I'm cheap. So what am I trying to do? I'm trying to, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to save. Right. I'm trying to keep my coins. <laughs> I'll, granted, granted, I'll help anybody. Don't get me wrong. I'm not like I'm that what's called. If I see that you're, you're struggling with something, whatever, and I know I've got the means to be able to do it, I will do it. Yeah. But it's, it comes within reason. Yes, sir. But again, that took a lot. It, it took a lot of maturing. It took a lot of growing. And now we have a thing where, you know, coming up again, fast forwarding all these these years where when we talk about budget and we talking about money, we have a thing in our house where it's this anything two hundred dollars or below. She don't need to consult me about it. All she need to do is just let me just give me a heads up. Hey, I did X, Y or Z. But if it's two hundred one dollar going on up to whatever it may be to a C note, I mean, to a couple of bands or something like that. Oh, no, we got to have a discussion about this player. <laughs> we have got to have a discussion. <laughs> so that's so with that in, in mind, that's kind of how we approach things when it comes with regards to money. And again, it is a blessing. And again, like it says, again, in, in the word about bringing your first fruits. Right. So with, I can tell you that this woman has taught me so much more from when we first got together when it comes to tithing. I knew that, yes, you have to get 10% or whatever, but I'm sitting trying, but what is 10 Okay, so do I figure out the 10% off the, just the, the $100 that I got in my pocket, or is it, that, you know, that's what it is, and that's, you know, is it each time, whatever. So she, she schooled me on, on that aspect when it comes to tithing. That, again, to the point where we're now, we've been blessed and, you know, matured as we've right. gone along in our marriage that I don't, I don't even think about it. It's literally, it's almost like it's a hot potato. As mm -hmm. soon as we get, as soon as I get paid, it's like, hey, wait a minute. We got to get this money up out of our account. Right. This, I got to I got to make sure I bring my stuff over to the storefront. Come on now. So that in itself, whatever, there is no room for us to have an argument or discussion about that. This that go it'll make different. What else is going on? What needs to get fixed? What we trying to buy? What we trying to invest in? It doesn't matter. It's automatically off the top. Bam. Right. right. Let me go ahead and give God this ten percent. So then I'm like, okay, this is what we got to work with. And then what are we going to do from there? So that's kind of how we uh, handle when it comes to, to money. Um, when it comes to, we've had some discussions again when it comes to loaning folks money. Again, got it. If I got it, I'll try and help you out. Again, within the reason we have to really do some, we have to, we literally have to sit there and do some, some discussing and, and debating on, you know, who are we going to help? A lot of times it's, you know, when we first got married, it was, I was kind of reluctant. I was like, well, cause you know, everybody wants to t come talking about this borrow stuff. Hey, can I borrow, you know, <laughs> $500? Can I borrow, you know, come with this story? Uh, right. You know, I, you get that long dissertation. It's funny, you know, you get that long dissertation or whatever about a loan. 
<laughs> but when it comes time to pay that bad boy back, I can't find you. Or if I'm able to, if I'm able to kind of talk to you, so I'm like, I'm offending you. Make a man buy some money. But wait a minute. I didn't come twist your arm with to make you borrow that money. Right, right. And you did say borrow. Right. So a lot of times what, what, I, what we would end up doing is I said, you know what? I, I'm not sitting here for chasing nobody about no money. That's, that's, that's a gift. We're just, just like, okay, hey, God bless you. That's it. But you can best believe you have made the list. That's right. And the list is this. That's right. When that issue comes back up and around again, no matter how many years it may be, see, Mike got a mind like an elephant. I don't forget nothing when it comes to some money. <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> nothing. I don't have to write it down or anything. Right. But you can best believe, hey, brother or cousin, such and such or whatever, and I'll just look at Christian and give her that look. Never mind. <laughs> she, she already knows. You don't cross, you don't put yourself on the list there, player. So I'm, I'm not, and I don't have an issue with telling you no, but a lot of times, again, they, tr you know, they would try and circumvent our system, or whatever, and try and go to her first. A lot of times, whatever, they don't come to me. It's, it's very far, few, and in between. Um, so that's all I'm gonna cover tonight on about money. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna transition. I'm gonna let her come on up because again, I got some other stuff, whatever. But again, I will, will revisit it since we're, again we're up on next Tuesday. So, honey. So that way I can. Thank you, thank you. And also I can keep from having to answer questions later on. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say he's not telling the truth, but my babe, babe. Yes, ma'am. You didn't want to talk on power. I'm no, I'm gonna I'll talk about Okay. Me. For real. <laughs> you know what? Amen, God. So I'm going to just say amen, God. <laughs> All right. Um, good evening, guys. Good um, evening. I thank and praise God that each of you got here and got here safe on tonight. I thank and praise God that you chose to be in the sanctuary tonight despite um, the weather that's going on we know that he controls it right. and he assigned gave you an assignment and I thank God that you obeyed um, I'm not sure what's going to come out of your obedience but I know it will be good because he is good and so I thank God for that um, babe you're not gonna hear nothing why you say that <laughs> you know? <laughs> he cracks me up. Babe, why'd you do that? <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave him alone. So he talks about money and um, and he's right. And I think that the last time that I was before you guys, um, I did hit on that. And so he is very right. We did come from very two different um platforms, backgrounds, um, how we were taught, um, our economic statuses were different. Um, and so therefore, um, I thank God, I thank God for his father. I thank God for his father remaining steadfast in his life and um, also being able to teach him the things that he needed to in order to be the priest of our household. All right. Um, and so I, um, I received that. I received that. Um, that part was missing, and that's part of marriage, whereas um, I believe that although we may have been um, broken, we were just right for one another. And um, in areas where I needed to grow, he was my best teacher. Um, and that was in, while we're, because we're talking about finances, I'll stay right there in the form of finances. Absolutely. And I love it now. Um, but I will tell you, ladies, one, one of the key things is I had to listen. Meaning I had to um, let go of defense coming from not just my childhood, but coming from being a single mom. 
and having to control the finances and everything that you have to control as a mom and wanting to be the best mom that I could be, um, trying to make end meet, ends meet. We know sometimes we do. We had to rob Peter to pay Paul. I don't, um, one of the things that we fought about, that, you know, we keeping it 101, um, is the fact that, you know, I, I used to tell him at times, hey, babe, you did not come from where I came from in that. And, and, and it's just, that's just truth, you know. Not that his blessing was, you know, it was a blessing for him, and it ended up being a blessing for me and for our family. But when you are trying to, Bishop says it all the time, merge two um, backgrounds, two families, um, we can't choose who our families were. But the beautiful thing is God already knew. Right. He knew yeah. exa the exact formula and what I would need. So um, this um, anniversary Monday, I gave him a chocolate man. You know those chocolate um, little uh, men, they got the little heart underwear on and all this. And up at the top it says, perfect man. And what I told him is that you were absolutely perfect for me. You are not perfect. Um, and you say that all the time, but you are absolutely perfect for me. And that's good. And that's enough um, for me. And, um, and that's all of that. And so um, it's, it's crazy because, uh, you know, while he talks about money and the ins and outs and, and how we um, went through our ups and downs, what he forgot to say is he never, let, he never had to take the checkbook. He never had to say, honey, let me, I'm going to take back all the finances. He trusted me enough, even though he was teaching me, he never had to worry about um, us going broke or me. While I, I may have had to go and sit down and say, well, babe, A, B, C, and D, or this is how it was. And, and in my learning, as he taught me, I had to lean back, I had to let my walls down, and I had to not get defensive in order to learn, in order to grow what God had called him to teach me in the marriage. Because um, I was telling a lady, a good friend of mine, marriage is an assignment to me. It is an absolute assignment. It's one that I choose not to fail. But I didn't always feel like that. There were times in this marriage and in our lives where I didn't know what was going to happen the next day, um, given our background with the military and the ups and downs. But as it pertained to money, I, he, when he did give me the checkbook, and mind you, I wasn't putting a dime in our account because we had agreed that when we got married and moved to Colorado, that I would be a stay-at-home mom. And I got to be that for eight years. And so he brought in every dime. He was used to paying bills on time and making sure that things were straight. Not only that, he had added not one person to uh, because he has we have our children so our oldest son we had uh, three at the time and I was uh, then expecting when we moved to Colorado um, he so he now had the four uh, children plus myself so that is six people six mouths to feed um, off of his salary and his salary alone under $100,000 at the time. So although we, we are somewhat comfortable, but we are believing God for that Coco blessing times too, because, you know, we got some other people. He knows I am a giver. Some people say you're a distribution center. I receive all of it if God says, and I will do it with wisdom. 
um, because I believe that's what we are supposed to do. Um, but he gave me that checkbook even then. Um, and I don't know if it was wise. I know that <laughs> I know that I prove I had to prove to myself Proverbs 31, that Proverbs 31 woman, which I learned here. Um, she built her household. Right. She had to build her household. Mm -hmm. I can't build it and tear it down at the same time, right? right. And as it comes to, as it came to finances, I had to learn to be honest. Mm -hmm. I had to be able to. I was codependent. So part of what he talked about today about people needing money and things like that, it was part of my codependency. It was part of an issue of always trying to make sure everyone was all right. So even when I was a single mother, my as the eldest, people relied on me. And God, in delivering me from that, had to show me, you are not their God. You are now an idol. They can't, they can't run to me because they're too busy running to you. And now you're going to do one of two things. You're going to destroy your marriage or you're going to learn. You're going to learn the lesson. And it's hard at times, especially when it's someone close to you, especially when you know their background. But what about your background? What about what I am trying to build in you? What about what I'm trying to teach you? Are you going to be obedient or are you going to go off creology, off of what you think you should be doing um, when it comes to money? And I'll put up, I was putting a scripture on it. God said, give. We're supposed to give. Yeah, but there's wisdom That's right. that comes with that. Come there's prayer. Their circumstances, and you can give someone something and kill them at the same time, destroy them and you. Mm -hmm. Why? Because God is trying to do something. Sometimes it's not just in money; it's in your, your you know, your advice to people. Sometimes God don't want you to give advice; He needs you to be quiet and let them walk through what they're walking through. Okay, I know you're right. So that He can be God, yes, and not you. And so I had to learn that in my marriage, too, because like he said, in, in teaching, we taught each other. There were things that he allowed me to, uh, God allowed me to suffer through, and also my husband did. But um, when, when I um, got this checkbook, it was heavy. It was a heavy thing. My own checkbook is one thing. I, at the time, you know, you go to, they had te tele check in the window, and you go write your little check, and you'd be like, oh, Lord, let the check, pay, uh, let, let the check uh, not bounce because I'm going to go put the money in there tomorrow, this, that, and other thing. You know, I had some things going, but when you have the responsibility of such a sweet, caring and give my husband, and Bishop had already said that the marriage was getting, you You had a beautiful wedding. He couldn't believe how Tracy marched, and uh, I forgot the young lady name. She, They put this wedding together. He was like, Creature, this is for you? And he was like, wow. He said, okay, this is a nice wedding. Tomorrow I'll come to marriage. <laughs> okay? And the devil's not going to wait until right. you get it together. And right. he's right. And that's why people came out the woodworks and, and different things and different tests. So we did. We went through a lot of tests in regards to money. But I want you not to pay attention completely to the beginning. <laughs> today, here today, through it all, we stand flat-footed, ten toes down in this thing, 24 years. Our debt is minimal, mm -hmm. and even, yeah. Beautiful. 
And the one key thing is our home is peaceful. All right now. So to sum it up in regards to that, in regards to our finances, I had to listen. He's right. I had to grow into being a wife. I had to listen to his plan. And he had to listen as well in regards to the sacrifice of giving. Like he said, he could be tight with a penny. And when it came to, honey, I was going to pay tithes. And he's, what's tithe? What? You going to do what? Didn't we just give an offering? Well, now I didn't talk about it. I didn't say offering. Okay, there's another one. It's, 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 there's, there's a method. Okay, this is my investment okay. portfolio, if you will. And it begins with giving. And so my giving wasn't bad in and of itself, especially when you're giving unto the glory of God, not for the sake of show, not for the sake of uh, fashion. You're giving it with your heart, whether it's a dime or whether it's a thousand dollars, if you're giving. But when I am giving unto the glory of God, to the house of God, for the building of his kingdom, yeah. I know I've invested well. Yes. Everything else, yeah. I don't have to worry about. And so for that, for him to understand that, um, because at the time, once we left here, we went to a church where they did have three, four, five offerings, you know, and so we had to begin to pick and choose. And we had someone come up and prophesy to us about, you, you give me $100 and I'm going to give you, you know, next week you're going to get 100000 At the time, you know, we gave the $100. You know, we were, um, it was an offering, naive at the time in regards to those things. However, God saw my heart. God saw Michael's heart. Right. We knew that we were giving unto the glory of God. And so anytime that we give while he says they make a list, they also make a list of prayer. Whatever you're doing with this money, whatever you're doing with the time that we're spending with you in order to try to get you on a budget, trying to, because we, we didn't give money and just, oh, here you go, here, you need $100 for your, your lights, gas, water, no, I always tried to give a little <laughs> what he said, yeah, just a little <laughs> speed, little, little, little wisdom. Look, this is what I'm doing. This is what I learned. Michael taught me this or that. You know, yeah, I know we've been taught past due notices is the bill. It's a lie from the pits of hell. It's not. Past due notices, past due, they finna cut you off if you don't pay that bill. Right? But um, I try to do that um, um, as well. So it was good in that sense. But what was even better is the fact that we were able to learn and grow from one another in regards to those finances. And as he allowed, and, and ladies, I say allowed because he is my priest. That's right. I am very, he, I am an A personality in regards to all the personality levels and all that. If everybody knows, I am. You know, I've had to take care of myself for a long time. So I, when I say, you know what, look, I don't need you, bruh. No, listen, I don't need you. I can say that, but in my heart, I'm like, please don't leave. Don't go nowhere, Lord. Let me just say what I'm saying. Let me get my <laughs> let me get my neck shaken out. But I sure hope I don't say too much, and He actually leave me. <laughs> But I had to grow. I had to grow out of that. I had to get broken down. He had to be uh, the oncologist in the money world. And I had to help. He had to help nurse me to good health All right. in that realm. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in a way, we may have nursed each other. But at the, like I said, at the end of the day, he... Um, we 
are doing very, very well with one another. We've stepped out on faith with some Amen. things Amen. that I question. Ladies, I had a Sarah spirit at one time when he was ready to move and do some things. I was like, oh, Lord, wait a minute. One plus one don't equal two. And you got me doing this budget, and you trust me with the budget, and I got to report back the budget. And he's like, yeah, but this is what I want to do. And this is what I feel like God is telling me to do. And this is all without the Holy Ghost. I'm like, Lord, you talking to him like that without the Holy Ghost? Wait a minute. <laughs> yes, he was. <laughs> he was teaching me a thing or two about faith and trust mm -hmm. in the person that he put in my life. I did pray about it. I did not just jump into this marriage. Be careful who you marry, single people. Bishop says that all the time. Might as well add it tonight. When he did, I had to trust that God was right, not that Michael was right. It's God and then Michael. And so our marriage has been built on that from a wife's perspective. I've had to because my mouth, my mouth and my ability to be independent and feel like I can make it could have and as a matter of fact should have destroyed my marriage because there are times where I didn't understand and I had to grow and thank God for the grace and mercy that he gave me in order to do that. And in the, the realm of money, which is a defense, we know it's a defense. We know it's good. It's good to give, but it can also destroy you. And even if you are still in a marriage, you will be married and miserable for your whole life all because of a tool that is supposed to be used to build you up, not tear you down. And so in regards to McBride Incorporated, we have a CEO, we have, a, a, excuse me, we have the priest, and then we have a CEO, who handles things, but I always go back to him. It was hard in the beginning, but as I decrease, not in status, but I humbled myself. I had to, because I had to get in my lane. Thank you, Vicki. Vicki sent me a message from Sarah Jakes that says, stay in your lane. And although she wasn't just talking about that, it really hit home because I had to play the position that God had now put me in. And that was as a wife, building her house, not tearing it down, listening, listening, and moving. First to God, trying to hear what he was trying to say and not over talk him because I know everything. Just because sometimes we know it and we know the right answer doesn't mean we got to say the right answer. That's right. Doesn't That's mean right. we always need to speak. Yes. Yeah. And get all. I have a good, good friend that says that's just too many words. Don't be saying all them words. You got a lot of words. Mm -mm. <laughs> and, and I learned from these good, uh, this couple is amazing, but all the words that you're trying to say don't always have to be said. Sometimes they demean mm -hmm. and you end up emasculating your priest. Let them grow. He had some growing to do spiritually and within this marriage. He was used to being by himself used to doing what he wanted to do with his money. And here he is sharing it with a whole family, attempting to do what thus saith the Lord. You think the devil's not coming after him? All right. 
Absolutely he is. And he was going to come right through me. He was going to use me. He was going to use the kids and anyone else around us to cause him to lose focus. And I was helping at first. Because I brought not just me, but I brought mom, dad, some sisters, some cousins, some brothers into the marriage. Oops. And he did, that's not what he signed up for. Mm -hmm. But I had to learn, oh, wait a minute. So I had to cut some people off. I had to cut some things off. I'm not mad at them. But like Bishop said, it's true. And you know who, I never had to go back there. Uh, into the office to be counseled because we were gone a lot. But what I did is when we heard those messages on those tapes, when I sat in these seats coming home, sometimes he was talking directly to me, and that's where the rebuke came from. That's where I had to sit through and, so, and, and, and learn and grow. And I thank God that I did that rather, and I was able to hear, not just listen, but I was able to hear with my inner ear, mm -hmm. with my spiritual ears. I was able to hear so that I could learn to build him up. He could learn to build me up. Mm -hmm. When we spoke, we weren't speaking at each other. Right. Though that all comes with time. Today, we got snowed in these last couple of days, and we're so happy. <laughs> oh, my God. We were in there. We played Connect Four. I beat him, too, y'all. <laughs> See, listen, it was like six games. To, I beat him. He came back, but that's only because I was trying to do some homework, too, and play him in Connect Four, but he was trying to learn. Anyway, it was a whole thing. We sat on the bed. Next thing I know, he was coming to the bed with a Connect Four. I was like, okay, okay, you want to get beat? Come on in here. Come on in here. I'm going to beat you up real quick. And we did. And we cooked. He wanted some chicken and dumplings and chili. I wasn't sitting up fussing. He, wanted, he went to the store with me, got what we needed. We saw Coco in the store. And I made homemade chicken and dumplings and chili. And we sat around. I did homework. He wasn't mad. He snuck a little Monday night football game in on me on our anniversary. It's okay. <laughs> Go ahead on with the little anniversary football game. Michigan won, okay. Mm -hmm. and, 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 but we, we went on, and there was peace. No arguing, no fussing, no fighting. Amen. But that's because we hung in there during the tough times. All right, now. That's because we decided that this is where we wanted to be. And that there was nothing else out there for us because we've already been there and done that. Our marriage had to be restored. Our marriage had to be, we had to sit down and do hard work. If you think shoveling that snow out there, imagine being having COPD, putting on all your clothes, your boots, grabbing your oxygen tank, and going out there trying to shovel that snow. Marriage is hard. Mm -hmm. It was work. It can take you to the brink because the person that you are trying to live with can take you there. Why? Because they're the closest to you. But if God said it, then no man, no man, no thing should be able to put you under. All but right. you've got to stay the course. Not with just him. It was the threefold cord, that Holy Ghost, that kept us alive. Right. That's why we run around now. We had to do the work. And we still do. We still have work to do. But today we are honest with each other, I think. We can ask, hey, you still in this? Yay or nay? Hey, what's going on? When he hurts, when he has tears, I can feel some things before I couldn't. But I can feel them now. All I can right. see them now. All right. It's because of the work. 
And finally, I had to do the work in me. Once I listened, I had to turn the mirror back on me. It wasn't, well, you're too hard and you're too mean and you always wanting to save and why can't we just live a little and why can't we just go here, go there? No, there was an end goal. And the end goal was for us to try and get here to a place where if somebody, somebody did, and I'll just say, somebody just asked us for a couple of grand. Without hesitation, it was done. Now that's not, oh, let's put an application in for a loan from Mike and Cretia for the Bank of Mike and Cretia. That place is closed. <laughs> I do want to let y'all know that place is closed. All right, all right. But God has called us to do some things and invest in some folks so that they know who he is. To where now, when we give, they're not getting from us because we're not gods. Right. And our money runs low. And we're stretched thin. But when he tells us to go above and beyond, because when that person asked my whole, I was like, huh? what? Well, okay. I, I was stuttering all the way to talking to Michael, and he was standing there flat-footed. He was like, in 2024, my yay is my yay, and my nay is my nay. Why are you explaining? I already said yay. God already said it. I was like, oh. He was like, you're doing all this explaining. Christian, land the plane. <laughs> I was like, well, I thought you wanted me to tell you why and this and that and present their case to you. Mm, no, because I'm not doing that. We know what we're doing. We know what we can do, and we know what we can't do when it comes to our finances. Right. And we know where our help comes from when it comes to our finances. And the last thing that we want to do is allow any man to put us under, even us, when it comes to our finances, because it will destroy. It can destroy. Um, last thing, and I'm going to close because it's time. I want us to get out of here. So, yep. Um, he knew I was going to talk longer because he knows just by nature I do. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, honey. Um, <laughs> I, even when I don't try to, I do. And, and so, hey, um, yeah, I um, wanted to tell you tonight, um, I got a call at 6 o'clock. And... Um, I want to tell you about that. But before I do, I wanted us to, um, Maylee, will you just read real quick mm -hmm. Luke chapter uh, 12, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. And I think it's starting at 13. I just got all kinds of stuff didn't drop. Thank you, pumpkin. <laughs> I just love my husband. He is so funny. I can't believe he said that. I'm still thinking about that in my brain. Like he said to get a whooping week. I mean, he might get a whooping when he get home, but it ain't because of that. <laughs> Did I just say that over this microphone? Oh, I am so sorry. It is a, listen, listen, he is not going to die. Babe, why you say that? <laughs> Luke 7, 13? Yes. Okay, so I want us to read just real quick um, Luke um, chapter 12. Um, start at 14, Mama May, and I'm in the NIV. I could just give it to you. I could go to it. I'm sorry, I'm always in the NIV. Oh, that's good. And while she gets this, anybody, real quick, does anybody have any questions, young people, any questions about um, relationships when it comes to money? Um, the one thing that I could tell young people is don't go to uh, what I told my young man, my, my king in training. I have two kings that are in training. Um, one just purchased a home. One is on the verge of getting himself together. They uh, both are married, and they both have children, and they're both raising their families. That's my receipt before I tell y'all what I told them. 
And not only that, they already know that mama and daddy, we don't play when it comes to God's money. Okay, so that's the first and foremost. But one of the things that I told the young lady who married my son is, yo, you, I'm raising, um, a, and I was talking woman to woman, that's why I used I instead of we. I'm raising a king. He's currently in training. And you rushing in here trying to get him now, you're going to shortchange you. Okay? Because when he went to college, what I told, what we were teaching him is to save his money. All the ideas that his daddy had taught him and all the principles that his daddy had taught him and all the things that we had learned from over this pulpit, we were now putting into practice and we lived it in front of our children. All right. Even when we couldn't sit here. Well, I told him, listen, if you choose to go ahead and marry now, you're going to struggle. Point blank and period. One, because you just got out of school. And guess what? You're going to have to save. You're going to, these are the dreams, goals, and aspirations. But he knew what he wanted and he did. And amen. Okay? But when the struggle gets real, you can't quit. You don't get to quit. So choose wisely. Think now, if you think that there is someone that you are ready to marry now, you get financially stable now. You learn from the Bryans, the, the Pastor KTs, uh, the man of God as he's teaching over this pulpit. You start saving now. All right? So when it comes time, you know how to invest you know how to pay bills on time. Start looking at your dad. Look at Marcus. Those who know, ask questions. There is no question that you should not be able to ask anybody in this sanctuary that's been through. You know who they are. They're leaders. Don't ever be afraid to ask the question. Especially if you have your eyes on someone. Because if you as the head of your household cannot maintain, it's very hard for us to follow you. It makes it very difficult. We might, we will, we'd be on our knees praying. Or even to say yes. You got to have it together. Got to know how to balance the, the, the checkbook. He already knew how to balance. He already knew, knew how to pay bills on time. He, he already knew how to do those things. I was the one he was training. So what better to do but give me the checkbook? We weren't learning together. So if you learn now how to invest. I'm not talking about not having fun. But make learning about money fun. Does that make sense? Young ladies, the same thing. You are one day going to be queens of your household. Anybody here play chess? Who play chess in here? All right. Tell me what is the most powerful position, the, power, what the most powerful piece on the chessboard? Who? Talk about it. Who is it? Why isn't it the king? Come on. What is, what you say? Come on. No. No. All right. What I have told them, the queen, and that's right. Um, and, I, and, and I don't want to get that deep because I, I'd be – Acted like I can play chess and I can't, okay? But the queen, when I heard that the queen is the most powerful piece on the chessboard, I liken that to the power that you all will have yes, right. and that I have. Mm -hmm. And that many women in this building have. If something happens to Mrs. Bell, she has then a choice. 
that can kill, destroy, or build up and protect her king. She has to be strategic about her move. Because if she's not, her whole household crumbles. Does that make sense? So if I go out there and I spend all the money, if I go out there and get myself into a situation, if I go out there and I'm doing things that I have zero business, it is my king who is going to want to move in position to protect me and he may end up killing himself. Which now I have zero priest. My children are unprotected because of choices that I make. He is the savior. He is the head. He is the protector. And his emotions are guided by his queen. And because of that, you hold so much power. Do you remember what Bishop was telling the young man and he was teaching? Who was he teaching? Which young lady was he teaching? Tashi about the young man. And he was telling her, you go tell him because his mother no longer has his ear. He's in love. He sees them, not him, not him, Michelle, but (laughs) I'm just saying. She has an advantage. She has an influence on him. And sometimes that's why we have to be very careful because these kings in training, if they get one good sniff of what you got, if you say the right, right thing, come on, men. The right, right thing at the right, right time. You end up pulling him up out of his safety net. And now you have a prince, not a king. And he's not going to be able to do for you what he needs to do. Young men, it's the same thing. You pull somebody that's silly. Somebody that got a lot of mouth, somebody that doesn't understand money, doesn't understand their power, doesn't understand what they're doing with your emotions, doesn't understand how they can build you up and tear you down. Yeah, no, yeah, no, (laughs) type situations. They'll destroy you. Women, we are so powerful in that because our protectors naturally want to do just that, that they'll end up putting themselves in the line of fire and sometimes even for some foolishness if they're not wise. Use your power wisely. You're still in training. Don't use it at all. It's half baked. It's not ready. You see it and you're getting it. Keep getting it until you come to yourself to full maturity and then go. And you'll only know that by the power of the Holy Ghost, wisdom, listening to those who he sent to counsel you. Remain in this sanctuary. Remain open to what your parents are trying to tell you. I know it's hard. I acknowledge it's hard. Stay the course this year. Stay the course this year. Clean your rooms. Wash the dishes. Shovel the snow that's out there. Do the laundry. Anything else y'all want me to say? Do the laundry. Take out the trash. What else? Keep them mouths. Keep them tones down. That tone thing. Keep the tones down. But parents, if they're doing that, then you keep celebrating them. You keep loving them. 
you provide them safe spaces in order to grow and to learn and to be understood. Remember your days of young. Hold on to them, but have fun with them too. Because then you'll have balanced kings and queens that can come out and do exactly what this man has done for me. Nobody will ever be perfect, but we can be doggone near. You understand? We don't have to claim brokenness. We don't have to claim, oh, I'm getting there. No, we king's kids. We're royal priesthood right here on earth. He has good for us, but that takes discipline to, in order to actually fully receive what he has for us. Does that make sense? Any questions about that, y'all? Any questions? Did that make sense to you? That's why you can't spread your, spread your legs for every Tom, Dick, and Harpo. That's why you can't give your thing to everybody. You understand? That's why. That's real. Today, a young woman just died. Why? Because she played with a man's heart. 17 years old. She's gone. She just had her baby in Dallas, Texas. Claim the baby wasn't here. Something happened. I don't know all the details. When my, but it was enough for my girlfriend from Dallas to call me concerned. What is going on? Plan with people. Plan with their emotions. She's gone and a, mother, a child is motherless and the baby's not even a week or two old. We got to stop playing with people. Stay growing, stay maturing, and until you are ready, stay on the bench. Whole another analogy, but stay on the bench until you're called to the starting position. You understand? Keep working, keep training until you are ready. Because once you get out there, it's not that there's not no turning back, but why you got to turn back when you got all the, the tools that you need right now? You don't have to do the turn backs. You don't have to have the turn back story. We got that for you. All you got to do is sit and listen and grow and be. Let us have the turn back stories. Let us have the restoration story. Is that okay? All right, go ahead and read that real quick and we'll be out. Are we doing Luke 7? So it's Luke 12. Luke 12. And I said 14. Sorry. That's okay. It was Luke 12. Yes. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Hold on. He, what was happening in 13 is a young man came. He said, Hey, Jesus, tell my brother to divide these riches with me, my inheritance. And Jesus replied to him and said, Man, mm -hmm. who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? 
I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus of grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? Listen, but God said to them, you fool, this very night, your life will be demanded from you. You have zero idea what's going to happen next. You can only say, if God wills, this or that, that's scripture, right? That's right. When you young people leave this sanctuary Be grateful for what you have right now. Right now. Married couples. My husband, I'm grateful for him right now. Whatever level you are, whether you're newly married, whether you are in the, you know, your fifth year, your seventh year, wherever you are right now. I cannot imagine him not sitting right there. And when I do... It draws me to him even the more. Conversations can be conversations. Arguments can be, can destroy. And you never know if you're going to be able to go back and fix that argument. Because you don't know. You hope. You believe that God may have further plans for your life. But the only thing that you're guaranteed is the second that you are here. That's right. Make that count. Mm-hmm. Enjoy that moment. Doesn't mean don't plan. It doesn't mean don't store. But also learn to give. Learn to enjoy what you have with wisdom. That means spiritually, physically, mentally, and experience. Especially in your relationships. What you say to your mother may be the last thing you say to her. How you respond to your sister or brothers. That's why God says lead with love. Don't store up a tomorrow that you don't even have. All right. Now, he was storing up riches, whether it's spiritual. Oh, I'm going to do this tomorrow. I'm going to do that tomorrow. I can't wait till this. I can't wait till I'm grown. I'm going to talk about that next week. I'm going to get rid of this emotion this week or that week. I'm going to get me and my husband. We're going to get ourselves together this week. I'm going to say I'm sorry tomorrow. I'm going to apologize. I'm going to forgive tomorrow. You have just stored up something you don't have. I'm sorry. I was wrong. How do we fix this? Cresha, get it together. These are things that we have to learn. I had to learn. Silence, slow to anger, slow to speak, quick to listen. Today. We are living only on borrowed time. And so if you do have a husband or a wife, I encourage you to dig deep and uh, pull up the root of whatever resentment, anger, misunderstanding you have. Not tomorrow, because you don't have tomorrow yet. That belongs to God. That belongs to God. And we hope you see it. But what's wrong with today? What's wrong with today? Young people, 
while you're practicing being with somebody, practice on your parents. What's wrong with building good relationships with them today? Parents, what's wrong with building good relationships with your children today? I was wrong. I didn't do the right thing all the time. Nope, I don't know that. I'm not that smart. However, let's try it together. Let's learn it together. Let me teach you what I know. Let me teach you what I didn't know today. Store up those good things so that if they are gone one day, you don't live with regret and couldas and shouldas and wouldas get in bed with you every night. Store up goodness. Before I came here at six o'clock today, I got the call that my cousin was at Clarkson Hospital. He's around 30, early 30s. He had a car accident this morning. I believe it's the one that made the news, but I'm not sure. God gave me this assignment. And I take these assignments seriously nowadays. Didn't always. But his neck is now severed from his spine. Jesus. My God. They thought that they were going to be able to do surgery tomorrow and they're having to do it as we speak. It could have been an excuse to run. But I believe, I believe God, he is who he says he is. His will will be done in his life. But what I mean by that and, and, and how that relates is he was on his way to school. He was going to school. He's intellectually challenged. He loves to rap. He loves to write poetry. He's on our autism spectrum. He just happened to be riding to school. And as of 6 o'clock today, they don't know if he'll ever walk again. If he lives through the night. You don't know. He stored up half a day when he put up his clothes, put on his clothes this morning. He more than likely was thinking about what he was going to do at school. He didn't know that he was not going to make it. Whatever he said to his brother, whatever he said to his nieces and nephews, because that's who he lives with, has to remain. Whatever they said to him and whatever they did to him has to remain. Because now time has stopped. That's why it's so important. Every relationship is unique and different. Can't tell you how to be a wife in your house. Except for you are meant to build and not destroy. Can't tell you how to be a good kid in your house. Except for you're meant to build and not destroy. Same for you parents. We don't know what's on the other side of these doors, but we know that there's weather out there. We know God controls that weather. We know that there are other people out there, but we know that God controls them too. So we are at his mercy. We have to live humbly, not haughty. Like we have everything under control. We can wave the white flag and say, God, I surrender everything to you. And ask that he do the work. And so I hope that you got something from tonight. I hope that you live for today. I hope that your households tonight will be full of peace and not war, no matter who you are. That's all I have. KT, can you pray? 
Pastor KT, please. Lucretia, what relationship is he to you? He's my cousin. He is Your actually, cousin. yes, and what's sir. his name? His name is Tony Kirk. Precious Lord, Father, and Savior in heaven, we say a special prayer for Tony right now. None of us woke up this morning not thinking we'd wake up tomorrow. So we extend a special prayer to Tony. Lucretia could have been by his side. She's here teaching us. So, Father, we extend a special healing in your will, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. That he and his family, despite everything, will be blessed. Lord, we say a special prayer for the McBrides. We thank you for being honest and open about marriage and money. And Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, that you're teaching the young people before they get married. You're teaching the newlyweds while they're married, and you're teaching the mature, Father, hallelujah. Stuff we may already know, but stuff we continuously have to do. We learn that love is not everything, Father. Hallelujah. Money can build a marriage or tear it down. That the most important thing is your relationship with God first. And most importantly, a peaceful home. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.